Hi everybody and welcome to Storytellers of Mallorca. We have a wonderful guest with us today and uh, we'll be introducing you to her in a moment. But, um, thanks for joining us. Thank uh, our sponsor as well, Share at webdesignshare.com. So, hey, welcome. Thank you very much for coming on to Storytellers of Mallorca. <laughs> Hello, Tell thank us you. who you are and please, and, and what, uh, how, how you came to be living here in Mallorca. Oh, so uh, my name is Anna Christine. Thank you for having me here yeah. as well. It's, yeah, I'm excited. Cool. Uh, yes, yeah. Looking forward to this conversation. Yes. And how I came here, um, it was an emergency decision okay. back then, many okay. years ago. Okay. So, um, like uh, 14 years ago, I basically was studying hotel management and I had to do uh, an internship. And my internship was already confirmed in Mexico and then it was cancelled last minute and I was like, oh no, where do I go? And then the best option that came up was Mallorca. Right. And me being German at that time, I was like, I don't want to go there. I've never been to Mallorca, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the option sounded really, really good. So the position was really good, the internship, the things that I was able to do. And I said, OK, yes. Wow, OK. That's and, fantastic. Uh, that yeah. was 14 years ago. <laughs> exactly. Does it feel like 14 years ago? N no, because there's a break in between as well. So I stayed here for four years right. and then I decided to leave because I wanted to see the world. But then nine years later, so in 2019, I was like, I want to stay somewhere. I want to have like put my roots down. Yes. Yeah. And then it came again. Mallorca came up again. Came up again. Yes. Yeah, a reoccurring theme. I know that sort of situation. You, you move away. But there's like a magnet, isn't it? Yes. A magnetic force just keeps on pulling you back here. Exactly. And, and so the, the energy here and the work that you do, because yes, Anna Christine is going to come onto the podcast as well. <laughs> so we'll just hear more about that. But it is, isn't it? It just draws you back in. Yes, totally. Yeah. Even in between, so I was away for nine years, but even in between, I remember there were moments I'm like, well, maybe I should go back. And then like, maybe I should go back now. But it was never the right time. Right. Until then, like mid 2000, end of 19, I was like, okay, now is the time. Yes. And yes. I was back in Europe then as well so I was like okay now it's a short distance to move over and everything went smooth and yes. here I am yeah. four and a half years later and really enjoying it really, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. but uh, in that time you know those 14 years ago you had that gap mm. that that's that calling that you had was it really a strong strong calling or was it just sort of popped into your head from time to time like the time in between yes I think it was a strong calling because the first time when I lived here already, I, I remember I said sometimes like, hey, I'm, I'm going to fly home. I'm like, but home is in Germany, basically. And I even said it to my parents like, hey, tomorrow I'm flying home. I'm like, no, wait a second. This is the house I grew up in. So, but Mallorca always felt like this, my home, yes, my yes, place. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it does feel like that. I know because I was in yachting for a number of years, it's sort of my sabbatical from the, uh, from the healing and the natural therapy side. And mm -hmm. when the boat came around the bay and I could see the, um, uh, in Porta Portal, was the lighthouse there, yeah. that was there, it was, like, it was like coming home. Totally, you yeah. Know, always, always, and you sort of got that excitement and that feeling yes. that, ah, you know, we're home, we can mm. settle, we can be calm, and it's the same thing that you felt. Exactly. Also, um, I did visit twice in between, and all like all these times, every time I was here, I was like, oh, I'm home again, and like everything yes, was yeah, reminding yeah, me, yeah, like yeah. the Paseo Maritimo at the time. I was like, oh, I know this place, I know that place, and I used to go here, and it was like, yes, I am back here. So the island said, like, you sure you don't want to stay? Yes, <laughs> I yes. was on vacation, so right, right, right. yeah. Here's and then the vacation turns into more. Yeah. Yeah, and then the offers or the, the opportunities come up as well. As, as well, and you know they come up so many times that you have to have to look at it. Yeah, and that's what you did. You decided to come here. So yeah, in that time that you were here, um, there must have been some challenges, some times that were, were quite hard for you. Yes, it, yes, it was. Um, like speaking from of the or about the last four and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, I feel I was quite lucky that I arrived in October 2019. Mm. So I was able to reconnect with some people, to make new friends, to find my place a little bit. Right. But then as well in March 20, 2020, 
suddenly I was like, okay, I have to stay home. And I didn't actually know anyone right. yes. <laughs> or just few people. And I was like, okay, now I'm staying home by myself with my cat. So that was a challenge for me because I didn't feel I had the proper support work or network here on the island to know like, okay, there's other people like on the phone I can reach out to sure. uh, all the time after, like once we were able to be going out. And I was like, okay, so how do I meet people now? How do I actually expand my network? Because yeah. before, the first time it was like because of work, um, the people that I knew was like, okay, have a barbecue here, have a party here, let's meet on the beach, let's go for a hike. It was easier at that time. Yeah. And now this time I felt like, okay, so where do I go to actually make my friends or make new friends? Um, that was a bit challenging. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you? How did you find them? How did you make new friends? Um, what I do? Uh, a so lot of networking, some, in yeah, a way, a lot yeah, of networking things. Looking and saying, well, we're thinking of moving, but we know, don't know anybody there. Yeah. Whether you're from Germany or from the UK or other parts of Europe. Mm. Yeah. I really have been going to a lot of uh, networking events, mainly women networking events, because yes. for me it was like, hey, I want to have like girlfriends. So I'm really looking for that girls' time as well. Yes. And I was really lucky to find some friends through there. And, and uh, also I did go to co-working okay. spaces in the beginning as well to yes. say like, hey, let me see some people because I was working from home a lot. And that's also how I got some, met some people that were, or some women basically, that were in the same, or have the same affinity as me. So that was really helpful. Yeah. Those, those co-working places, I, I love them. I think they're great, you know. And, um, not that I've ever worked in them, but, but I understand I've got friends that, that have co-working places around, I don't know, mm. around the area, around the uh, aquarium there. Uh, and they're always busy and there's always people chatting, you mm -hmm. know, there's those that are doing the work, you know, isolating themselves. But they really, that is a good place to, to meet and to communicate, yeah. really. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then from there, you never know, maybe that person is not really the right person, but then they might introduce you to someone else where you're like, hey, this is like now my best friend, you know? So yes. you never know what comes up through um, out of that. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that, that, is, that is good. And then that starts to blossom, you start to meet more friends. Yes. And then as you said, you go on hikes, or you start doing activities together, or invited to workshops. Yes. And then the, the, the circle gets bigger and bigger. Yes. So how long do you think it took you to, to for your circle to grow, say to say, say 10 people? Was that quite quickly for sort of 10 friends? Or did it seem to take a little, a little longer? I think for me, just because whatever happened, I think was a special situation and everything. Um, I think it took me two years to really say as well, like, hey, I'm here, I, ar I have arrived. Um, because, yeah, because for me, one of the big things is like, I went to the north of the island and suddenly I'm like, oh, I know someone. You're like, hello, how are you doing? So you drive an hour or something and you meet someone. For me, that was a sign like, I have arrived. Or I started to walk through Palma and like meeting or greeting people on the, on the street because like, okay, I know people now. So, yeah. yeah. So that an initial time, the initial period there where a bit nervous about you know, not knowing anybody, it didn't take that long to feel, feel comfortable being here. Was there, was there a time where you didn't want to be here? No. 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 No? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like every time I was like, hey, I know there's challenges, but for me it was always like, would I want to be anywhere else? Like, no. I want to be here. That's that's my place. That's my home. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. We know. We looked at that um, a few years ago. Where else would we want to go to? And I've tried to live back in New Zealand a few times, mm. but I always keep on coming back over to Europe. And then we we're looking around the UK with the weather, and then other parts of Europe and things. And it didn't really match up to everything that's offered here mm. in Mallorca. Yeah. You know, because you, you've got you've got the weather. Um, the, the climate is a big mm. thing here, the food, and it's turning into such a, a spiritual community here. That's right. Really, yeah. you know, and it's growing, so the family, the community is just is, is growing every, every week, every month, and there's organizations now that you can become part of on WhatsApp or on Facebook, and ever, but there's something on almost every weekend. Yes. Every weekend. And, yeah. and I know what you do as well, we'll get to that in a moment, um, but you share a lot of that as well, which is fantastic. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, there's never a time, and so it's really good. So, if you're looking at this, <laughs> no, you know, once you're here, you may not ever get away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if there's one piece of advice that you'd like to, to give people about those thinking to come here who have just arrived here, what, what, sort of, what sort of advice would you like to give them? 
be social, yeah. but do the things that really call you because there's so many things on offer. So instead of just going everywhere, even though you're like, it's not really calling me, it's not really my thing, mm -hmm. don't go. Go really to the things because there's so much on offer. Go to the things that really call you that also are aligned with your, your hobbies, with your values or things that you're interested in because that's, I feel, where you actually make the most connections. Otherwise, it's just going to dipping in here, dipping in there, and you don't actually make strong connections, I would say. Yeah. <coughs> no. And give yourself time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's give a big thing, isn't it? Time. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. And choose the time of the year uh, when you want to be here because you arrived mm. in October. Yeah. So it was the end of the summertime. Mm. So there's pros and cons for that. So it was coming into winter, so things were closing down, but it was quieter mm. and you had more chance to explore without all the crowds and that being here. Where if somebody comes in, say, June or July, and August is not a good time, really, unless you've mm. been here, yeah. because it gets, it gets really, really hot. Then you've got all the summer crowds, but you see the, the hustle and bustle and the energy of the summertime as well. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it depends, doesn't it, really, on, on what, what you're after when you arrive. I, I would say so. I mean, for me, I had the advantage I lived here already, so I knew what it's like in wintertime. Yes. So, for me, that wasn't really... A big challenge let's say or an obstacle to say no I wait um, obviously as well depending on the time when you come it's if you come in the winter season or also like in the springtime it's easier for of course if you say hey I want to live in this area to find long-term rental yes. in high season it's a bit more challenging yeah. it's doable for sure but it's a bit more challenging and uh, maybe take your time to figure out, okay, where do you want to live? Do you want to live in the center of, my, uh, of Palma or would you like to be more in the center of the island, more to the east, to the west? Take your time to explore because not everybody likes the same things, right? No, no. no. And I know, I know some friends who have um, just moved here uh, and picked up everything. They hadn't, they've been here once before. I mean, mm. that was, that's, a, that's a, big, uh, a big challenge in a way. Mm. That's a lot of faith to say, I'm just going to move to Mallorca without living here. So, mm. you know, it's good, as you said, for, to come here, to spend some time here, yeah. and you get a feel for it. Because there's right. not only the living here with your work and everything else that's going on, but then you've got to go through the government bureaucracy, the Spanish, <laughs> there we go, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. Then you've got this side of things as yeah. well, which is very much manana, mm. isn't it? Okay, let's, let's put it off till tomorrow. And I know when we were going through, the government uh, department, you'd go in there, and I had to in the end, with a, with a mindset of, okay, well, what are they going to ask next? Mm. It's not all going to get done today, mm. and you had to, had to be aware of that. Mm. And it's, it's a fun thing, putting it off, but you have to, it does teach you patience, doesn't it? Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And meditation is good if you <laughs> have to do yeah. that. So, you know, if you are thinking of coming over here, coming out here, then spend some time, you get a feel for it. And mm. as Anna Christina said, Look at where you want to be, because at the moment mm. we're in Palmanova. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I live not that far away, you live not that far away that way. But then you've got um, Payensa, Alcudia, the north of the yes. island, which is beautiful up there, but you are isolated from Palma. Palma City is beautiful, but it's a city mm -hmm. whether you want those vibes and Could energy. be a bit loud. <laughs> Could be a bit loud. There'll be yeah. some places there, and in Santa Catalina uh, and other mm. areas. Um, but there's some beautiful places, and mm. if you want to go into Valdemosa, you know, in the middle of the island, I mean, mm. that's lovely there, but again, you're a distance away yep. up on the hill, so it's, you have to see really what, what area you want to, to live, isn't it? To, yes. To see. So, um, you know, yep. it's, it's an interesting time for people that are coming here, and, and I know for myself, I've been here two or three times before mm -hmm. you decided to, to stay here, yeah. and like yourself, you know, that was important. Yeah. Um, tell us, what do you do? <laughs> I basically help people with their emotional, mental, physical and spiritual well-being. Mm -hmm. So I'm an embodiment coach with uh, dance movement therapy, but also somatic body work. And really to go like basically on an inwards journey, meet your emotions, meet your beliefs, mm -hmm. the patterns, the blocks yes. and find your answers within. So. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. That's what and, I do. And you're doing that in a, in a, in a group setting, a situation, or one-on-one? -on -one? It's, it's both. It's, it's both. group settings. Mm. Um, there's uh, weekly classes, there's workshops, but also one-on-one -on -one settings where there's it's like a six-week program that people can go through okay. to really work with whatever's present within them. Right, okay. And we'll put under Christina's contact details um, <laughs> below this as well, so you can contact her. Um, so when people come to it, what do they what do they think is going to happen after that six week period? Well, change. Yeah. <laughs> the the beautiful thing what I see is people feel empowered because they get a lot of tools on hands. Plus, they find their answers. Mm. It's not me telling them this and this happens, so this and this you have to change. It's like no, it's a space where they I accompany them, but they find out their answers and they realize, oh my gosh. I can do this and oh I have the power to do that and oh this is actually not true anymore so I actually am this person and then they can start practicing uh, in those six weeks already to really live that person or to be that person outside of those um, let's say coaching setting and then afterwards they realize hey I can expand it more and more and more so they kind of they transform, they go undergo a transformative journey. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Is that, yeah. is that wonderful? And I've seen some of the, the videos that you do and of course a lot of the images on the social media sites and it looks fun. It really does look like that. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like everybody like after the session they leave with a big smile and then they're motivated and they're positive and they know it's like, Hey, I can do this. Yes. So they have a much better uh, feeling and image about themselves which yeah. I love so because only if you feel it within that's actually when you can make a change sure. so yeah that's, that's yeah yeah that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's payment you know we need the monetary payments as well but that's another payment that just makes you feel good about yeah. helping people get through those yeah. barriers and then come out the other side yeah, 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 yeah. um mm. so uh, what going back to to this telling your story a little bit that moment when you knew that you wanted to be here in Mallorca, mm -hmm. do you remember when that was? Not entirely, because I know in summer 2019 I was here and also I went to Berlin where I'm from yep. because I wanted to check out both places. Okay, is it Berlin or is it Mallorca? Yep. It's very, I know, the opposite. But I thought, okay, only if I'm there, I can figure out a little bit, feel into the situation and see what I want to do. And I remember that I was first here and then I went to Berlin and I met up with some friends in Berlin. And one of my friends, she was like, so are you moving to Mallorca? And at that time, I still didn't know. And I just started bursting out in tears like, I don't know. <laughs> but, well, maybe I do remember because after that meeting, I kept walking with my best friend and then... We had a little chat and then she was like, well, maybe travel through Europe. I'm like, I don't want to travel through Europe. I want to go to Mallorca. <laughs> so in a way, I actually, I think I did know, but my, my mind was just so full. My mind was, was, was yes. kicking in there. Yes. Saying, and I had just been go, going through a rough situation. And okay. so I wasn't entirely yet maybe in place, yes. but my heart already knew because yeah, when I walked with her, yes. it was like, well, I don't want to travel. I don't want to see other places in Europe. I want to go to Spain, so I, in a way I knew, but it took a while to really feel it sinking in. Yeah, to sink in. And when yeah. it did sink in, that feeling? Oh, it was good. Yeah. It was alleviating, because yeah. I was like, okay, I know where I go. And then also, once I started looking, um, I looked online for apartments, and everything was so smooth. I right away found something for mm -hmm. two months, which mm -hmm. gave me time to really explore, like we said before, to explore, hey, is this village the right village for me? And I realized, no, it's, for me, it's too far. Yeah. I want to go closer to Palma. So that was really, really beautiful. Everything was just coming together. Yeah, yeah, and it's beautiful how, how we are all different. Where a lot of people are quite happy in a village mm -hmm. setting, a setting, yeah. a situation there where they're just in the village. They've got the two or three bars or cafes, restaurants, very Spanish mm. style, uh, and they're comfortable there. Um, myself, I love to be by the sea. Mm. I have to be by the sea. I have to be by the ocean within walking distance, swimming distance yeah. uh, from there. So that's that's uh, that's for me. Uh, important and, uh, and everyone, everyone is different. Really, yeah. aren't they? Everyone is different. Yeah. That, that feeling. Um, and living here, what do you, what do you like about living here? The sea. The sea, and the same, the sea. <laughs> the yeah, sea, yeah. I love the sea. Yeah. But also, I would say the quality of life. So, for me, it's 
I feel people here enjoy more their life. So it's, yes, they work, but also during the week, they make sure like they do some sports, they meet up with friends, they go for a drink, they go for dinner, they do something, or there's entertainment outside as well. It's informative things and culture, but also, um, I mean, you have the movies yes. and stuff like that. But it's like, you really make sure that you really make the most out, out of your life. Yes. So you don't only wait until Saturday, Sunday to do something, but they do something throughout the entire life, uh, entire week, I mean. And also, it's being outside a lot. I mean, like right now, the weather starts to change, springtime is here, so for me, until probably November, it's the time where I'm mainly outside. And that's something beautiful because everybody else is as well living outside and just, yeah, making the most. Yeah, even at the, the winter time, we can still be outside. A that lot. is, yes. That's a, that's a big plus where other parts of Europe, other parts of the world, you're stuck inside. Yes. For yeah. the whole time, and that's the beauty of it. And we yeah. know, I'm eating dinner outside on the terrace, on the balcony. You know. Yes. All the meals are out there. Going to the beach, going swimming, yeah. and, and uh, enjoying the outdoors. It very much, you know, it is very much the, the outdoor lifestyle here. And you have so much outdoor activities. I mean, you said hiking mm -hmm. because you got the swimming. Um, Cycling is, is huge Cycling, here, yeah. mountain biking, yeah. um, uh, canyoning, yeah, the canyon, yes. name. Yeah, which after the rain of course, you know, yeah. a bit of rain there from there, yeah. but there are activities aren't there, and there's, there's, there's so many, and yeah. there's, I think there's two or three books out of hiking in New Yorker, two or three books on different trails oh, wow. that, yeah. you can, that you can walk, mm. and there's sort of one on the west coast, one around uh, Cuba, around, around the mountain, mm. around from there, in different places. So there yeah. really is the outdoor activity, which is, yes, which is yes. great. So and there's many hiking groups that you can join as well, and they go like on different tours, yep. easy ones, yes, more yeah, difficult yeah, yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. So you, it's another way to explore the island and as well to meet people and maybe you make friends. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you improve your language. You improve, yes. definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think we forgot beach volleyball. There's a lot of beach volleyball, yes, the big true. beach volleyball scene. Um, stand up paddle surf, the yes, yes. kayaking as well is very big. Yep. Sailing, of course. Yeah, sailing. So, yeah. yeah. Does scuba diving. As There's well. a lot, of, lot, of, lot yeah. of those around. So, all the different sports, the water sports, the land sports, yeah. um, which, is, which is, yeah, really is magic. And dancing. Place. There's and dancing, dancing as well, yeah, <laughs> a lot yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. Which is, which is uh, yeah. Which is growing, it's getting bigger and bigger. It's getting bigger and bigger, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. dancing, it's like ecstatic dancing and also for me a lot of the salsa and bachata dancing, which is something like the more Latin dances. Okay. For the ones interested in that, it's okay. a big scene as well, very open and welcoming as well. Yes, so. yeah. yeah. That's, that is the thing, is that the, the Spanish people here, when you start to, you make an effort with the language, mm. but if you make an effort in the social settings as well, they're very friendly. Mm -hmm. yes. they? They'll go out of their way. Yes. You know, if you if you need a lift, you know, they'll drive ten miles to come and pick you up to take you somewhere. And that's, mm -hmm. that is lovely. That is nice. You don't get that in a lot of other cities around. I mean, there's there's always positive and negatives to wherever you live, but mm. the positives here really yep. out, outweigh themselves, don't they? Which yeah, is, which is really good. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to, to share with people that are looking in? Either mm -hmm. about your story of being here and mm -hmm. what you're doing and that transition that you make or anything else? I would say, like, I mean, you touched on it, but for me, I feel the language as well is super important, like mm -hmm. to make an effort to learn the language. Um, because, yes, it's very easy and often we're drawn to like sticking with people that speak our native language. Mm -hmm. But I feel to really make the most of the experience and also integrate in the country and on the island is like, speaking the language yes. because it opens up so many more doors to so many other circles where people maybe only speak Spanish because they didn't have the chance to travel or maybe it's a bit more challenging for them to learn English at school I mean we all know yeah. you learn in the country yes. so I would really say like make the effort and learn Spanish yeah. Yeah. not just like una cerveza and that's yeah. it but like really to have a conversation because there's so many people out there that have so many interesting stories to tell yeah. Yeah. And yep. if you don't understand the language, it's hard no, to no, hard to no, hear sure. about it. And if they are, because there are different languages here. You've got you've got the Catalan, you've got the Castellano, you've got the Mallorquin. Mm. You know, there are other mixtures there. But if you start talking in Spanish and Castellano, they will 
Oh, uh, it's appreciated. It. Yeah, yes. and they appreciate that. Yes. They, they will talk to you, slow things down, and help you along the way. Yes. Say something that's not quite right, and, and they like most places they'll laugh because that's not what you meant to say. So <laughs> they will sort of help you, and they'll, they'll teach you a little bit, which is really nice. Yeah. It? It's, 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 so, yeah. And you know, it is a friendly, a friendly island yes. in a way. For most yeah. times, for most cases. Yeah. 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 I've I've had really good experiences with the Spanish, with the Mayorquin as well, because a lot of people say like the prejudice, the Mayorquin a bit more closed. But I feel like every time when I went to them and I was open, they were really open and friendly. Yeah. So I feel it's a bit like with the mindset, like how you kinda like get close to them. They perceive you the same way. So if you get close, then they close off. Like, okay, who, well, who are you? Why are you guarding yourself? But if you're like, hey, how are you? And yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. make an effort, they also yeah, open yeah, up. Yeah, sure. And the food. How did you get on with the food here? Because, you know, and some people, and, and I know that the, the <laughs> Anglo um, Saxons that come over here, you know, when they come on holiday, they like the, the British pub type food. Mm. And they, some of them get a bit upset. But this is this is Spain. This is a part of Spain, mm. and you have to adapt and, and be mm. ready. You know, yeah. in, the, in this beautiful cafe here, which is very authentic. You can, yeah. you can hear the noise in the background there, which I'll try and drain out as when I do my editing. But it is about the food here. The Mediterranean mm. diet is very strong here, and it makes us healthier. Yeah, isn't it? I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I enjoy it. It's like um, if you want to have like the seafood, there's beautiful seafood. You have the salads. You have the more Spanish uh, tapas style as well, which I feel as well is super nice. Yes. It's like again, like socializing. If you do like tapas style sharing, you get to know the other people again yes. Yes. that yes. you have dinner with. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy it. Yeah, and they also have, you know, with friends and everything, you have your potluck dinners, yes. as it were, so you, everyone brings something different as well, and that's always fun. Yes. So, and that's bringing in the, in the, uh, in the different cuisines as yeah. well. But there's everything here, from the meats to the vegetarians, exactly. you know, to the vegans and as yes. well, and, and the raw food diet, so everything is here and it's, it's Everything is here, but, yeah. yeah. And if you miss your own food, it's here as well. If yes, ever I wanted to have yes. German food, I could go there. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and the pot like on the beach, for example, is super beautiful as well. Yeah, just, yeah, 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 no, it's, 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 yeah. And the barbecues, the brides, the you know, yes. everything, everything is here. <laughs> yeah. Really so, yeah, no, fantastic. Yeah. Great, and Christine, thank you very much for coming on. My pleasure. Hello, New Yorker. Um, I will uh, put uh, Anna Christina's links down below there, um, so they'll be there for you to, to check out. And she will be coming on the podcast very soon. We're just organising the room for that at the moment. <laughs> uh, big thank you to Share at webdesignshare.com. And please, uh, the only call out, please like, share, and subscribe uh, to the channel. And this is Storytellers of New Yorker, and look forward to catching up with you soon. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.